Hello guys, this is Mrs. Butcher and this video is over linear programming. Linear programming is a type of optimization process designed to find the minimum or maximum value of a given quantity. Linear programming consists of some constraints, which is going to be your system of linear inequalities like we did yesterday, and an objective quantity, which is an, a separate equation that represents um, usually cost or profit. Could be other things, but most often it's cost or profit. Your steps to solving linear programming problems are these. You have three. The first step, you always want to graph the system of inequalities. Those are your constraints. So um, you know how you shade an area, and then your answer has to fall within that, um, that overlapping shaded area. So that's your system. Those are your constraints. Then you find the vertices of that shaded area, um, the corners, basically. So find the vertices, the intersections of the lines. And then you're going to plug those vertices, your x and y values, into your objective quantity, which is an equation. And you'll solve for the maximum and minimum values. So let's do an example. OK, here's example one. And it says find the maximum value and the minimum value of the objective quantity. So I've just set this up for you. I've given you all the parts you need. This is your objective quantity. So it's P, probably profit, equals 20x plus 40y. And then these are your constraints. It's your system of equations. So now, um, and then here's a graph for you to plot them on, and then I ask you what the minimum and maximum values are at the bottom. So let's graph our constraints just like we did yesterday. We've got x is greater than or equal to 3. So that's a vertical line, solid, through x is 3. Greater than or equal to means we're going to shade to the right of that. All right, y is greater than or equal to 0. So that's y equals 0 there. Greater than or equal to means we're going above that line. And 4x plus 6y is less than or equal to 24. So you could put that in slope-intercept, or you could just look for your x and y-intercepts, which is how I like to do it. So when x is 0, then 24 divided by 6 is 4, y is 4. When y is 0, 24 divided by 4 is 6, x is 6. Take a ruler, connect the dots, and you have that line. Um, it's a positive y and it's less than, so we're going to shade below this one. So that means that we're going to shade this little triangle right here. They're all solid lines, no dotted lines here. And we now need to find our vertices. We need this corner, and this corner, and this corner. So when you find the intersections of two lines, you're solving a system you can use substitution, graphing, elimination, whatever you want. Um, in this case, it's easy to see on the graph that we have our corners. We're going to write down our corners. Always write them down. This first one here is going to be 3, 2. The one down here is 6, 0. And the one here is 3, 0. We can label them on the graph, too. All right, so we've graphed our system. We've found the vertices, the corners, and now the third step is to plug the vertices into the objective quantity. Each one of these is an x and a y, and so I'm going to plug them in up here for x and y. And I'm going to find all my different values of p at each of those different locations. So I didn't really leave room. Um, let's see if I can squeeze it in at the bottom. For our first corner, 3, 2, I'm going to say p equals 20 times 3 plus 40 times 2. And that gives us 140. For the second corner, um, 6, 0, and it doesn't matter what order you do them in, but our p is 20 times 6 plus 40 times 0 gives us 120. And then for the other corner, our p equals 20 times 3 plus 40 times 0, and that gives us 60. 
So our profit at each of these points, we now have um, 140, 120, or 60. So let's answer the questions then. It says the maximum value of P is, and the maximum value we found was right here, the biggest one, 140, when X is 3 and Y is 2. And the minimum value of P, the smallest, was this one, 60, when X is 3 and Y is 0. And so tomorrow we're going to take these types of problems and we're going to apply them to real-world situations um, and you'll be able to find uh, the answers to if this was a profit equation or something like that. All right, now we're going to do example three. So if you're looking at my printed notes online, I'm skipping example two. It's very easy. Um, so I don't really feel like I need to go through it. But example three is a little tougher, so we're going to do this one together. We have our objective quantity right here, C equals 3X plus 4Y, and we have our constraints right here that we need to graph. So X is greater than or equal to zero. When X is zero, that's the Y axis. You have to actually draw the line on there. You can't just use the axis as your line. Don't be lazy. And greater than means we're shading to the right of that. Y is greater than or equal to zero, it means we have a line on the x-axis shading above that. And then we have x minus 3y is less than or equal to negative 12. Okay, so that means that the x-intercept would be negative 12, which doesn't show up on our grid, and the y-intercept would be 4. So I know my y-intercept is 4. I don't know what the slope is, so I'm going to take this one and I'm actually going to put it in slope-intercept. So I've got negative 3y is greater than or equal to, and then I subtract x to the other side, negative x minus 12. And if I divide by negative 3, I switch the sign, I get 1 third x plus 4. So I've got my y-intercept on 4, and then my slope is up 1 over 3. This is a solid line. And note I had to switch the sign so it's less than. I'd be shading below this one. All right, and then the third line, um, 3x plus y is less than or equal to 24. If I found the intercepts, my x-intercept, if y was 0, my x-intercept would be 24 divided by 3 is 8, which is right here. And my y-intercept would be 24, which isn't on the grid. So I'm going to take this one and rewrite it over here. And that would be y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 24. So I know this, my slope is negative 3, so I'm going to go up 3 and back 1. Draw that line in. And we want less than, so we're shading below this one. So when we end up shading below this one, below this one, above this one, and to the right of this one, we get this little quadrilateral area here. All right, second thing we need to do, find the vertices. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. So the corners, I'm going to write them over here. Are, um, well, zero, zero. And this one is going to be eight, zero. And this one over here is zero, four. And then we have this tough one over here. Luckily, we graphed it nice and cleanly, and you can see on the graph, if you count, that that's at 6, 6. But if you were unable to figure it out, you know, if you're graphing it on the calculator or whatever, um, all you would have to do is solve this system of these two equations, because that's the intersection of these two lines, and you would come up with 6, 6. So there are the four corners. Now we're going to plug them each into our, our uh, objective quantity. C equals 3 times 0 plus 4 times 0. So at 0, 0, our objective quantity is 0. C equals 3 times 8 plus 4 times 0 gives you 24. C equals 3 times... Um, 0 plus 4 times 4 would give us 16. And C equals 3 times 6 plus 4 times 6 
gives us 42. So the question, the minimum value of C is 0 when x is 0 and y is 0. The maximum value of C is 42 when x is 6 and y is 6. So when we get to our word problems tomorrow, that'll be um, applicable to combinations of things that we might actually want to do to maximize our cost. All right, so I'm going to let you guys be done and have a good evening. Good night.